It's an eagle. It's an eagle. Uh, this guy we've played with a lot. Uh, Nikos are fun. So and I love this stuff. This isn't me. This is his guy. And I, you know, I let him run guinea pig because he wanted to. So these units, they have a blower motor right here. And this blower motor um, pumps the oxygen in to the boxes. And that helps the combustion. That little motor, not this one. The OEM motor is like $800, maybe almost $900 now which is ridiculous. It's a 24 volt motor. Well, the, and I, I do it too, but you know, he let it, I haven't done it with this specifically. So this is a little motor that numerically, when he started, this has the right, it's a high pressure, high RPM motor. This moved the correct amount of air, but it had a square head on it and this is round. So the guy here who's brilliant, uh, he does 3D printing for a lot of things. So he 3D printed this adapter, which allowed for that to go in there. Well, the fan is still working, but you can see how gunked up the teeth are. It's just not moving air anymore. I mean, there's just so little air and they are, you know, calling saying we're not getting good temperature. You know, they used to be able to cook for like 315 or 320, 330 maybe, and now they're cooking for four, four and a half minutes. So that's generally because there's not enough airflow. So the owner bought the OEM motor. Again, I love this idea, and this did work for a while. So the question is, I mean, and I'll, I'll drop real numbers. I think this motor cost like eight dollars right so what if you this motor works just fine for a very short time before it got gunked up what if you just changed it every month what if you spent eight dollars every month you'd spend a hundred dollars in motors for the year instead of eight hundred dollars crazy absolutely crazy but yeah so we're going to start with that and that's probably going to solve their problem but i'm going to change that we did a deep clean on this not long ago. Uh, shot a video of that. Um, bum, bum, bum. His left chain. Left chains get used a lot more. Yep, and so you can see that happens. They primary will eat, primarily will just run a stack of burgers right here. And so when they're busy, just boom, they'll just drop burgers right there and they'll wear out that piece of chain. So it's nice to get the uh, the store to alternate. If you're only going to run one set of burgers and run them over here right now or run them here, you'll, your chain will last a lot longer. Anyway, that's enough yakking from me this morning. Let's get this motor in hand and get it swapped out. All right, we're going to run an experiment with you real quick so you can see. We have it on. We have our baby blower running. Let's see if we can get a good look at the flame in here and see what she looks like. As this comes around, you'll be able to see. Look in there. All right, you've got a kind of just a staggered flame. All right. Nothing to speak of. This is the motor that's supposed to be. Ah, terrible. What in the world? There you go. This is the motor that's supposed to be. Let's plug it in and show you the difference. Okay. That's blowing some real air. I'm gonna let this fire up again. And see if it is to come around again. 
Ow! Look at your fly. Alright, and it's funny. I mean, real time. I think it's been two minutes. And this temperature is just skyrocketing. But, what I'm gonna, it was set at 600, right? So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a calibration. We're gonna set this for a thousand, okay? And this is what you're supposed to do once a year. It's pretty clean. The unit is pretty clean. So in a perfect world, you run a cleaning, which I did two weeks ago. You set this for a thousand. You set a, a one hour timer, which I'm not necessarily gonna do, but I'm gonna watch it and see to see how high it can get. I'll have to go back to the reference material because my mind is telling me 25 degrees and I wanna make sure that's right. Whatever it gets to, whatever its maximum capability is, then you set the temperature 25 degrees less. So for example, if this gets to 700 degrees, right? Then we're gonna make our set point 675. Then we're gonna run burgers through and adjust our timing. Also, I need to put this on or you're not gonna, you're not going to be able to get a, uh, an accurate reading. <laughs> oh no, there you go. Cause you're getting too much air intrusion. So set it for a thousand, let's see where it goes. I'll verify that it's 25 degrees less we'll figure out what our new set point is. Because it changes, it changes with age, it changes with gas pressure, changes with all sorts of things, so. All right, so we have very quickly hit 600, which was our previous set point. Now we're gonna wait and see how much higher it can go. This is also an, actually look, it's not 599, so. Uh, I did a calibration on this, I think in January, it's June now. So that may be, you know, 600 may actually be our legit point, which it looks like, and we're going to give it time. Uh, but doing this also helps you realize when there's a problem, right? You clean the unit, you put a new fan in it, oh man, let's set our set point. Let's, let's pretend all of a sudden this was 650. Well, or 675, so we set this for 650. So we're running 650 like a champ, two months, three months, and then all of a sudden, they'll go, man, we just can't hit 650 anymore. You know, we're only hitting 610 every day. We just can't get there. And we know the unit can get there. That tells us there's a problem, right? Either it needs to be cleaned, you've got plugged orifices, you've got uh, a gunked up fan, something. So doing this helps you get a baseline of where your machine is in relation to its maximum capability. I've got 10 minutes left on my timer. I set a 45 minute timer. So, just checking in. All right, so it's hanging out at about 640. So I'm gonna set it for 615, let it get back to 615. Then I'm gonna run a burger through for three minutes and 30 seconds and see how hot it comes out. Oh, I got it hit. In she goes. Three and a half minutes and then when it drops out, I'll catch it as quick as I can and I'll temp it and it's supposed to be 160 or 165. Again, I'll have to check the DQ And as she makes her journey through, it initially dropped down to under 615. But think about it, I put a a zero degree burger in there that's going to affect the temperature and then shortly thereafter it uh it then started bringing hot grease out of it and that brings it a little higher so you're always going to fluctuate and if you if i load this thing up this may jump to 630 or 640 just because of the grease fuel but we're getting close and so when it's done the chain is just going to drop it right in here and I've got the temperature probe ready to go. We'll pull it out, temp it, and see if it temps up. There she is. Pull her out here, see what she looks like. Oh, look at how, look how juicy it is. Okay. 
this is hard to try to get it in the axle of the meat of the burger. But, hang on, because I don't think I've really got it in there. So let Just me as step. a matter of fact, there's nothing wrong with this burger. This burger's cooked beautiful, it's juicy. It's got the broil on it. But the standard for Dairy Queen is like 160 coming out. So the fact that we weren't quite there means we're gonna cook it. Contrast, I'm gonna feed one in on this side, set it for four minutes. So it's gonna cook for substantially longer as a matter of percentage. And then you'll look at the difference, how they come out. Our left side is gonna drop in a moment. I'll tell you what put that in there for my four minute one to see how it comes out. You see the grease dripping from the pan? That means the burger's close. If we wait around there, it is. Alright, let me stab it properly. Again, you lose temperature quick out here, but that's why they want it to be 160. And I think this is the formula. I think the formula is 615 for 345. There isn't a mandate of like how long should it take, right? So sure the owners can be like, I don't want to wait 345 to cook a burger and throw it. What do you, you get what the machine will give you. That's not unreasonable. If the machine is accurately running at 616 and it takes 345 to get to 160 degrees, that's what it is. I can set this up to 630, but it won't hold it because its maximum temperature was 640. So you don't want to stress the machine either. So you have to find the, the ratio of the formula. And I just ran the new set through and I'm thinking 345. 15 is the ticket. Uh, where did I run? Right side. I ran through two back to back. I was getting 159 out of them, and you can see they're cooked a little harder. It's still juicy. I think we're going to go with that. Leave them there. And then we'll have them watch and see how this runs today.